Hello, welcome back to the uh, Nottingham Test Centre. And the uh, third final that we'll see today, or well, third match we'll see today, second final we'll see today. Men's doubles final between the number one seed Stefan Uday and Nicholas Pfeiffer of France up against the pairing from Argentina and the Netherlands, Gustavo Fernandez, who is the world ranked number one in the men's singles, and Michael Schaefer's of the Netherlands. Well, Uday and Pfeiffer are the number one seeds. We don't have the uh, number two seed, sadly. That is uh, Alfie Hewitt and Gordon Reid. They've um, departed, but uh, Alfie will be back tomorrow for the men's singles final when he will take on Gustavo Fernandez. He'll be watching that on Sunday. This one, however, is uh, definitely uh, very much a heavyweight contest between a man who has been number one and the man who is number one, Stefan Houdet. Yeah, uh, very uh, established wheelchair tennis player. Man who's been around for a long, long time and has been dominant in it. Along with Nicholas Pfeiffer, who's a decent single player in his own right. But when they combine together, very effective number one. Yeah, can Gustavo Fernandez and Michael Schaefer do anything to stop them? We will find out. Men's doubles final which will be followed by the way once that's completed by the quad final with Brian Barton and David Wagner for the Americans up against Anthony Cottrell and Andy Lapthorne for Third Great Britain set. so here we go Michael Schaefer of the Netherlands right. to serve first in the men's doubles final And we can expect some very big hitting for the likes of Gustavo Fernandez. That's he in the grey and the orange. First game achieved by the Dutch and Argentine com pairing. Combinations of what I'm about to say. And um, very comfortably achieved as well.
<laughs> well, the wily old fox, 47 years of age, he will be in November. One game new day. Showing that uh, he's got all the tricks, all the skills. Uh, to upset his uh, much younger opponents on the other Down side the of the court. Here comes the world number one serve. Probably notice a bit of a difference in the chairs also, which uh, I felt and who they are in. This is worth something like £125,000. So the uh, real Rolls Royce of your chairs. Let's see around pretty quickly. Yeah, good interception by Nicholas Piper on top of the net. Very good net coverage. Tends to be how they work with Piper and the advancement needed. He's the man to do it. Oh, real problems here. Seat. Three break points against them. Yeah, actually work. Good combination. These two understand each other very well, not only language-wise, but also on the court. Of uh, a good combination for a while, and that's the breakthrough they wanted. A fairly uh, comprehensive one it was too. So Uday and Pfeiffer move into a two games to one lead. Let's uh, look at the. Let me get a close up of the. The wheelchair of Stefan Uday. Actually, from our angle, we probably can't because it's on the other side of the net, but uh, you'll just about be able to see it as people seem to be uh, getting a bit of rain wear on because, yes, there are a few spits and spots around. We weren't expecting um, mid afternoon rain, but it may well be heading our way. Slightly darkened skies above us, and certainly the wind is getting up. Campos putting his jacket on few other people as well so thank you Lisa. there's that wheelchair we're talking about just do a little compare and contrast between what Pfeiffer. Nicholas Pfeiffer sitting in that, uh, bad, bad boy that uh, takes Stefan Uday around the court oh. Pfeiffer serving at 2-1 Out, the Dutch were wanted. Know, they're not 
quite on the same page as these two. Our reach. That would do it better for uh, Schaefer's. Close. Right down the centre, bisecting the Argentine-Netherlands combination. Since we can do so well, it does so often. on that, no way that the Hunter Time is going to get on top of that. It's getting a bit frustrated, I think, that um, a couple of those have been out of his reach. If it goes long, so a chance for a break back. I'll uh, bring in Mark McCarroll in just a moment. Just join me after having a, a big hit. Get ready. I'll just, I'll just turn your mic off so we can hear you as well. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. So they break back uh, for 2-2. Two -two. Nice big heavyweight contest here, Mark, isn't it? A lot of big hitting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Gustavo at the moment is is he's so high on confidence and he's he's playing really well. And obviously, you know, FIFA and Houday have they make finals everywhere they play. So so yeah, it should be a really close, good match we've got here. It's a combination of the, the French have been together for quite a while. They know each other's games inside out. They're obviously caliber players but uh, it's, it's an interesting combination that the Dutchman and the the Argentine who kind of sort of work each other out and that how how things work best for them on the court yeah I mean a, a, you know a doubles partnership is uh, you need to be really good friends and you need to understand how each other play and how each other move so uh, yeah they've played they've started playing together the last few tournaments and yeah I think it's starting to obviously click making the final here um, obviously a really good win yesterday against uh, Alfie and um, Gordon. We'll talk about why Gustavo is number one in the world in a few minutes time when we get to a break, but we'll um, see this game through, see what happens. Shame. Great retrieving by Gustavo. And maybe that's an indication of the kind of thing I was going to lead on to. It's just how hard he hits the ball as well. You, you, we're right alongside it, so we can see it firsthand here. Maybe it doesn't come across on the telly quite so much, but the, the 
power he puts behind those shots. Yeah, he's striking the ball the best I've I've seen him. You know, I've been I've been watching him for the last sort of 13 years, and I've seen him grow as a player. And yeah, the way he's striking it now is is the reason why he's world number one. And every tournament he plays, he seems to make the final. He's uh, it's really really consistent with it as well. Strong upper body, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely a finely tuned athlete. Three, three, two, to him. Four, too long, but looks at things. He, he and his uh, Dutch teammate for this, Ben Sobers. Hmm, <laughs> a little bit long. As you mentioned, they came through against uh, Alfie and Gordon in the. Uh, Semi final, much to the annoyance of the British public who obviously want to see these two out here. Alf has uh, just been sitting along for us watching. There's a few spits and spots of rain in Nottingham now, which hopefully don't uh, amount to anything. Uh, a lot of effort being put in, but they're back to juice again, not having two game points. Yeah, the French are really solid. They uh, they both move really well, and they they make you play that one extra ball every time. That can be really frustrating, which is obviously which Gustavo is finding out. Yeah, might just be handling the advantage in this first set back to the French pairing. So for all that good retrieving and all that hard hitting, the uh, Argentine finds himself with his partner. Break point down. Not really get there. <laughs> no, he's not. Yeah, go and go, 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 but. You can only go about as quickly as the wheelchair allows, as you well know. <laughs> you yeah. can't get there any quicker. Yeah, he's he's one of the quickest on tour, so if he can't get it, then you know it was yeah. a very good drop shot. Argentine swear word there. <laughs> Obviously not happy with things. Yeah, yeah just one and one or two errors creeping in. Well, with, uh, I think he thinks he's letting his um, his partner down a bit here because he's doing the serving, getting the ball in. Yeah. This way. <laughs> yeah, so there's the break. Um, 3 2. I'm going to sit down. I can um, say belated congratulations on your uh, forthcoming arrival. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Yeah, we had, uh, we, you know, we've had the good news that um, obviously my partner Jordan is. Uh, Expecting uh, well, both of our first child, so um, no, really looking forward to exciting times ahead. Was it hard to keep that quiet because you obviously played at Wimbledon and won at Wimbledon, and didn't tell anybody about it? Yeah, we obviously wanted to get to you know the the twelve week mark and the twelve week scan to to make sure everything was okay. So yeah, Wimbledon just just came just before that. So uh, yeah, it was it was it was tough because all the interviews were sort of uh, about you know what what's next, what how are you going to. You know what, what you're going to go on. Sick? Why, yeah, why are you being sick? <laughs> and um, obviously the wrist. She had a wrist injury before, so people were like, "Oh, the wrist injury is fine. So what's wrong now?" It's mm. so yeah. It was it was tough to keep keep quiet, but um, yeah, Serena managed it. So um, yeah, she did. Well, yeah. 
Sophie will be coming back, and no doubt Jordan will come back after the baby, I imagine. Yeah, no, that's the plan. That's, mm. you know, she's, um, she's still young, she's only 25, so she's still got a long time left in the game. Excellent. 3 2, French with a break. 15 love. Do you like that chair? Who does? I couldn't see it personally, but um, yeah, no, it, you know, it brings him an advantage, which is uh, obviously your, your, your chair is your legs. So if you know if you can get the most out of your chair, then it obviously will help you um, perform better. I must mention again, the guy is 47 this year, so you know, he's um, by far the oldest man on tour now. Um, there's Isn't he? no, there's there's a couple. There's Martin Legner. Who, All right. uh, he, you know, he's not at the top of the game, but he was at the top of the game when I started. He was top ten. Um, he's, you know, fifty odd, and um, you know, there's a few still, still playing. Maybe, maybe more for fun now than, uh, yeah, you know, the Houdet at the top level now is, yeah, by far the oldest in the top ten. Described it as the Rolls Royce of wheelchairs earlier. Pretty much is, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, what I heard it, you know, is. is 250,000 euros it, it, mm. yeah, it comes to, which is a lot of money to invest in a, in a you wheelchair. You buy a luxury car for that. Yeah. yeah. Probably buy two luxury cars for that, actually, think about So the frustrating thing about playing Fernandez must be the fact he gets most things back. You know, which, whatever angle you use, whether it's a drop shot or you go deep, but he gets it back. Yeah, I mean, he his movement is, you know, he doesn't have a 250,000 euro chair, but he, uh, yeah, he moves so well. He's so strong up top that uh, his power to push ratio is just so good. Um, and also, he, he's been playing the game a long time, so he re reads the game really well. Um, but yeah, it can be really frustrating when when you play against him and one more ball comes back and you're used to that being a winner. Point for a 4-2 lead for the French. Oh. A bit worried about this weather. Yeah, the wind's, wind's really picked up. Oh. Yeah. Wind's picking up, it looks pretty dark overhead. I'm sure I felt a few spits and spots of rain, so um, hopefully it might blow over. So it wasn't forecast. Not this time of the afternoon, anyway. Seeds to uh, pull it back do have them uh, in the position on the court very well take them right down the center and back to juice <laughs> what was that shot from Fernandez I know, yeah a slice was that a squash shot yeah a, a slice forehand to keep it nice and low to Huday's forehand that was effective, whatever it was, did the trick.
great rally. You want a winner to come from a rally like that. For the ball that went wide from Pfeiffer. So we're back at three games all. That break didn't last very long. You have to back up the break, and of course they didn't. No, they didn't. No, the yeah, the way the wheelchair tennis goes is, uh, you know, there's a lot of break of serves. It's not like the able body game where the serve is um, is key. But the way that you know wheelchair tennis is going, uh, the serve is getting more and more important. Does Fernandez have a weakness? Is there anything in his game that you see that you can exploit? Um, a few years ago, when um, when I used to, you know, I was playing in, at World Team Cup, and I saw Gordon play against him, and Gordon really used the slice against Gustavo. Um, I mean, Gustavo has a topspin backhand, and topspin forehand, and you know he's bringing out the slice forehand. But yeah, the slice, I think, if you can keep it low and out of his strike zone, then then he, you know, I wouldn't say struggles, but it's probably not as strong as the rest of his game. Oh, called out by the uh, chair. Not called by the lines judge, called by the chair. You're celebrating. My boss says, no, you don't. Let's look at the replay. What's it saying? Ooh, it like a challenge there. Oh, great point. Great point. Well earned by the French. Uday's delighted with that. As well he might be. Um, that's not their point until that very last shot. Uh, having a race to who can get to the drop shot first. <laughs> yeah. His week on today. Serve. Dropped his serve early in the set. Looks like he's going to drop it again. I think you'll be watching this closely. Mm. Oh. So going to crawl over the net. Not quite. Still break point though. Well, that was a bit hit and hope. That yeah. was that really was it. There was no controller buying that at all. That's that's so unlike the way he plays. But some frustration there. Now it's funny with that replay you were talking about. Go to Hawkeye. Of course now, because we've been playing on the show court at Wimbledon and also the other Grand Slams, so Hawkeye comes into play. And people you, you sometimes you look at wheelchair tennis players now and go. You got Hawkeye, and they go, "Oh, yeah, Hawkeye! Now we can actually use that." <laughs> that must be, you know, especially at Wimbledon. Now there, there must be uh, something to, that people are trying to get used to. Yeah, um, uh, we had an example of this year when Geordie was playing in the uh, in the doubles final, and she hit a shot, and I was down the the end where she hit the shot on the baseline, and I thought it was really close, but I couldn't really shout over to her and say, "You need to challenge." <laughs> and I think afterwards I said, "Why didn't you challenge?" And that was a worm. It's the one that we thought was um, was close, but it was right on the um, umpire's nose. So if he's going to overrule, that's the one to do it on. But um, yeah, that's the conclusion. But um, it's now technology is involved, and now you get them onto some decent courts at Wimbledon as well. Was like number three. Yeah, Blimey. court three was that's elevation, uh, isn't it? That is, and it was full. It, you know, it wasn't it wasn't half half filled. So you know, it's great the way. Uh, you know that we can fill stadiums now with uh, wheelchair tennis. And US Open to come. Do you excite? 
Yeah, and earlier on in the year we played, uh, Andy Lapham played against Dylan Alcott and, uh, in Aus the Australian Rod Laver Arena. Yeah, yeah, and Rod Laver, so. It's making strides. Getting, uh, it's a little bit too late for you now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I stopped after, after Rio. So um, yeah, I'm just doing my coaching, uh, coaching badges now. But it's still great to see that uh, yes, the game's moving on. Some good change ups on serve, isn't he? Pfeiffer, in the, in the way that he delivers it. Sometimes there's a little kind of slice serve, and sometimes you put the full force into it. Yeah, he, he mixes it up quite nicely. He sits so high that uh, he can actually, uh, you know, he can hit pretty much any serve he wants, and he uses that to his advantage. serve though, still two points against the serve. Somebody takes it out of mid-air like that and, and dumps it into the net. More often than not, it just seemed to me that the amount of winners from those kind of positions, don't see that many. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's quite tough when the ball is out of your comfort zone and uh, when you're sitting on a chair that's moving. So, you know, you can slightly yeah, lose balance. And, uh, yeah, that, that's probably what happened with Gustavo. Is he's maybe lost a little bit of balance and he's not in full control of the shot. Anyway, they've got the break, and we're back to 4-4, and um, nobody's blinking at the moment. And one seed from France, far end, is to receive from Michael Schaefer's. Great wow. core coverage. Wow. The way they were kind of, um, kind of interlinking there, moving from side to side and actually kind of crossing over and everything else. That, that was fantastic. Yeah, I think the French thought they had the point one when they got Gustavo out wide. But, yeah, again, great retrieving skills. the call up. Absolutely no way anyone's going to get close to that. Yeah, a few more spits and spots of rain. Not uh, too much to worry. It's not like grass where hard court could take it a bit longer, can it, for, for the wheels? Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably not about the uh, the surface. It's more about the push rims. If they get wet and then you can start slipping, then that could cause some injury. Thank you. 
Yeah, there's a big question is why is everybody finding it so hard to hold serve at the moment? Everyone's just returning. There's not been many errors on the return. I mean, they're, they're returning deep and putting the pressure straight back onto the, the serving team. 1540, two more break points coming this way. Oh, what a slice. What a slice that was. Oh, it's so deep to do a slice like that as well. It's quite a risky thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah the Shepherds isn't known for his slicing. But he, uh, yeah, connected well with that one. Who they would like that ball back again? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Who's going to win the chair race? Neither did. Ball beat them. Just took it all the way off it, didn't it? Just kind of died on top of the net. Down the middle. Players either side, but unable to get to it. Either backhand wing or forehand wing. So uh, it's an important point. Keeps them in the game. And is blindly with the uh, surrounds. got a really good chance because we're right on top of things here to see that the speed and the force of the way the Fernandes hits the ball both backhand and forward does he have a weak wing either side does he uh no by the looks of it today and now he doesn't he um yeah he's very you know very strong off both wings so it's it's sort of hard to come up against against him when he's on this form Ooh. Well, it's a good idea because both Come men on, right mate. at the back of the court that with a bit of winner had it landed in, probably, but uh, isn't, and they uh, survive. In fact, they've moved into a 5 4 lead. So we'll get new balls and we'll get uh, thoughts of uh, Mark McCarroll on how this uh, first set is going. It's been quite a long set, too. A couple of breaks and um, no kind of advantage visible on either side of the net here. No, I mean they're both both teams have been really solid from the back, um, using the court really well, and yeah, like I said, there's not been that many errors from from the returning team, so it's it's been hard to hold your serve, but yeah, Shepherds has managed managed to to hold his serve, so hopefully um, they're probably thinking that they've they've broken uh, 
who they served last time. So if they could do it again, they could uh, take the first set. Mm, well, yes, the balls are back with him. See whether he can hold on this time. Because uh, if he doesn't, then the Argentine Dutch pairing will take a first set. 4-5 on the Houdet serve. New balls. Did I detect a miss hit in the middle of that from Pfeiffer? Yeah, he got uh, <laughs> he got quite lucky there. It came off the top of the net. I thought it was going to die on the uh, on Sheffers again, but he managed to pick it up and returned it to point around. No. Longest rally of the match. Don't ask me how many strokes. It just seemed to be going on for an eternity, but uh, eventually was a mistake. Uh, they won the point. And the uh, French will get that point. you're not supposed to be able to lift yourself out of your chair but who they gets very close to it yeah he gets um i think the the rule is obviously you have to have one um bum cheek uh, on on the seats at all times but uh, yeah there's been a few uh, few times where he uh, it looks like when he's stretching he he, d he, uh, he does come off but it'd be it's very hard for the umpire to pick that up from uh, from yeah. his position problem is with it if he's facing the umpire he doesn't see that because yeah. it's happening behind him but um, he almost kind of needs like a fourth umpire or something like yeah. that <laughs> and Schaefer's number three seeds might get the first set against the number one seeds here Oh, 
does amaze that Piper doesn't get whiplash. He he spins round so quickly. Yeah. It's like it's like a spinning top. And I kind of think it kind of leave your your neck where your head used to be. <laughs> it's really strange. Another set of point. What's the tactic on this one? Uh, FIFA's made a few errors, a few errors, and uh, doesn't look like he's timing the ball too well in the wind. So maybe, uh, maybe a short return from Sheffers down the line to uh, FIFA. Nicholas didn't play a single shot in that round. No, that's, uh, that's how much I know about <laughs> I was waiting for him to get a shot. Yeah. No, they still got the point and they've still taken the set. So yeah, they kept the pressure on Houday, so they would, didn't allow him to uh, to open up and use the court. Get it done whichever way you can. Yeah. Six, sets, uh, six games to four. First set goes the way of the number three seeds. I need to talk to you about what's coming through because we we're seeing how well Gordon's doing, how well Alfie's doing. Two and three in the world now for Britain, which is fantastic. What about the next generation coming through, the next tranche of, uh, of young tennis players, British wheelchair tennis players coming through? How's that looking? Yeah, I mean, at the, uh, the British Open, we've got the, the, the Junior Open, um, uh, which is happening as well, which is great. I think last year we had uh, 10 players, and this year we've got, uh, I think, close to 22 players. So um, yeah, the juniors, um, we've got a little small group uh, coming through, um, but yeah, the likes of um, Gordon and Alfie, you know, they're inspiring the next uh, the next generation. And yeah, we've got a few youngsters like Rory, um, who went to the Tarbs this year, and um, that was great experience for him. I think he's only 15, so um, for him, you know, he, watching watching Alfie and Gordon play, that is you know only going to help him, and. Um, yeah, I think we think with the game growing with Wimbledon, then I think only more people are going to get involved. Good. Encouraging signs to say Britain number one and two, and of course Lucy Shuker in the top ten for the women at the moment. So all looking quite good, and uh, where the quads are concerned, and he's number two in the world, I think at the moment. Yeah. Number two, yeah, I think yeah. he's just gone to number two. So uh, I think he's, uh, his goal this year is to take that number one spot. Yeah, all looking good, and the uh, next generation coming through, looking pretty encouraging as well, which is good news. For British World Chess and Quads, of course, because we'll have the uh, Quads final coming up next, after this is done, with Andy Lapthorn and Anthony Cottrell, up against uh, Brian Barton and uh, David Wagner. And he's got some good results against Wagner recently as well, so let's see if we can uh, get the better of them today. That'll be next up. amazed me how uh, Nicholas FIFA managed to generate so much spin off just a flick. Mm. He's, uh, you always think, think, oh, I've got him in trouble. And then he just pulls out a shot that you just think, where has he brought that from? But I think, like you said, he's, he's a powerful, powerful lad and I think he uses that to his advantage. Mm, he's powerful and say the way he moves in that chair Something of that kind of size is yeah. uh, it's amazing. Sure. Tack in the second serve as well, this side. It's always a 
a good tactic to uh, try and get the lob at the player at the net. Uh, that one just missing. Fernandez has actually held on to his serve yet. So he's, had, he's dropped it twice. So, so probably not actually, <laughs> thinking about it. Well, that serve got what it deserved ultimately. Yeah. Little floater. Yeah, maybe he was <laughs> trying to change the pace, but it didn't work. Oh, the interception was actually yeah, quite good. Okay. I thought it was quite risky, and that worked out well. And then um, Hernandez, Hernandez puts it long, so that's three breaks on his yeah. his racket. Uh, number one, well, I'll say if Alfie Hewitt is watching, and I'm sure he will be somewhere, uh, taking all this and thinking, oh, okay. Yeah, that's something I can exploit for tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, they, they played each other recently in the, the Roland Garros final where uh, when, I was, uh, when I turned up, it was... Six love, two love, and I was thinking, okay. So, but he managed to turn that one around, and um, yeah, won won his first uh, singles Grand Slam title. Just didn't quite work out the same way at Wimbledon, sadly, but they played each other. Uh, Gustavo, yeah, I think uh, for many years they're going to have some really strong battles against each other. Next one coming tomorrow, but um, yeah, let's see, world well, number three now. And this time last year, world number 10. Yeah, he's had a very, very good year. <laughs> so I'm desperately trying to peek through the clouds. It's uh, got a little bit warmer. Rain seems to have gone, what we had of it, which wasn't much. And uh, conditions are a little bit better. Ah. Oh, beautifully angled, just teased who they enter. I think I might just be able to get. Oh no, I can't. Yeah, I think he might have used the <laughs> used the wind as well to his advantage there, and uh, yeah. They thought he was uh, he was there. open that the way that popped over normally that would come back on his side yeah it? <laughs> that cracked into the net I thought well, that's back on your side mate but actually no, <laughs> crawled over and they've got a point for two love lead Yes. 
much should I come back? <laughs> And they lost the point. How did they lose the point there? Oh, I don't know. That that point should have been yeah, over with the, with the smash. How do you allow that to come back in the play? I don't know, but there you go. French have uh, another point for two love lead. Trick shot city or yeah. something. <laughs> That's what he should have done with the last point, put that finish it like that. from near the baseline. Good serve. <laughs> Excellent serve down the middle and uh, had the desired effect. And uh, French number one seed into a two love lead. They did um, lose the first set though by six games to four. But, uh, from our GB player, and of course, uh, part of the Rio team. Got that uh, winning team, six medals. Six medals? Yeah, it was. Uh, from Rio last year. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Uh, if. Um, if you said before you were going to win six medals, I wouldn't have believed you. But yeah, people uh, people performed to the occasion. They rose to the occasion, and uh, that's what can happen. Got to beat it in Tokyo now. That's a problem. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be tough. Why does he keep doing that? Not sure. What looked like a comfortable service game has now turned into a you know, potential break. That's two slices from deep in the court. It's wor yeah, it worked once, but it's actually worked fewer times than it hasn't. Yeah, I think that's what I was saying earlier about you know, 
and slice is probably the weakest part of this game. Ridiculous point that was. I don't know how yeah, much that's got the instinct, it, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know how he got that back, but <laughs> yeah, he managed to uh, make Hudo play that extra shot off behind the back. This is how he do it. Yeah. We'll be hoping he's on off his game as much as he is today when they play in the final tomorrow. Yeah, just stretching for that one, trying to take it off a really low ball. You know, it's, uh, it's really tough when you're uh, moving forward. Oh, we have a hold. Yeah, finally got the hold. Yeah, and uh, well, it isn't Fernandez, obviously, Schofers. And uh, puts them on the board in the second set. So they're going to have a little sit down. Well, I talked to you about, somebody I was talking with uh, Lucy about earlier, about the Dutch model. Now, we see Schofers here. We saw the girls earlier on in the women's doubles file. Are we kind of looking at their model, trying to work on that, or trying to do our, kind of our own version of what the Netherlands has done the last 15, 20 years? Yeah, I mean, when I first started, uh, yeah, the, the Dutch men had uh, Robin Ameland, uh, Ronald Vink, and Sheffers in the top 10, and the women still now have, well, obviously they had uh, Esther Vergeer, who, uh, who in, I think inspired most of the, the people that are playing now in Holland. Um, and I think the advantage they have over us is is once they if they have an injury and then from from hospital they're given a sports chair straight away and really encouraged to go out and try and find a sport as as part of their rehab right. um which obviously you know helps helps them get into sport and get a lot of people playing and that pool of people they can choose from um is obviously bigger but yeah, I think, you know, in a few years, you know, now we've only got one Dutch top top player in the men's, but the women's still strong with Anik and Jeska, and obviously Dida and Baus. Two on. Both for serving. Thank you. 
much margin for error with um, Piper's wheel either on the baseline. It gets pretty close. So just forward as you went backwards that time, but yeah, you don't often find a, a wheel fault being called, but uh, it has uh, has happened in the past. Angle. Great angle. The line judge was in trouble there. No, we, yeah, I was, I, I was worried about that, especially on tight courts like this. Is watch your feet. Yeah, you will get run over. easy hold this time. Seems to have helped the French uh, changing ends on where they served in the first set. They both uh, both held in this set. They were struggling in the first. Yeah, 3-1 and uh, they're very much in the ascendant in set number two having lost the first 6-4. So uh, look at the moment like it's going to go three which again will be uh, good news for Alfie Hewitt if it does. Beautiful. That's kind of nut ca net <laughs> nuts coverage, net coverage you want. Um, With him so being so big and tall, it's uh, he's definitely a presence at the net. Yeah. I'm just surprised they don't use that more often. Full stretch as you can get, trying to get that ball back, but able to do it. Yep. <laughs> Again, beautiful angle. So quick. <laughs> Covers the court so well. <laughs> and his serve uh, under threat again. Yeah, he's really struggling. Maybe they should have uh, changed the ends they were serving at as well. Four in a row if he uh, succumbs here. And his serve. Set up and said, "Hit me." Yes, he did. goes and uh, so we're moving inexorably towards a third set here yeah they're in control of the second set for one end of the uh, that game which uh, Fernandez is having all kinds of problems with his serve 6-4 they took the first 4-1 they trail in the second so the uh, number one seeds getting the better at the moment of the number two seeds. Reminder later on, after this is all done and dusted, we'll bring you the quad final. Brian Barton and David Wagner against Anthony Cotterell 
and Andy Lapthorne, one and two in terms of seedings. Can they turn that around? Yeah, I th I, you know, Andy's uh, you know had a really good result yesterday in the singles, so I think he's he's confident. Um, and it's you know relatively new partnership for Wagner and uh, Barton because for many years and for many Paralympics the gold medalists were Nick Taylor and David Wagner. So with uh, Nick not travelling as much, then Barton's you know started stepped up and started playing with Wagner. So. I think Anthony, who's you know fairly new as well in in a partnership with Andy, I think they've um, they've got a real chance. Uh, to you later on, maybe uh, considerably later on the way things are going, because we could um, be going into a third set here, not too far away from it. Four one now to Hude and Pfeiffer in the second set. And, uh, it is Hude to set. cheap point what he wants isn't it when you pull one up heading for a potential set win creeping into the to the Sheffers and Gustavo's game at the moment. Almost a comfortable service game that um, Stefan Day's had. Yeah. for a smash away. That's not always happened on the racket of Schaefer's today, but that was exactly what he needs to do. Right position, right direction. The well up's coming back. He nearly tipped himself out of his chair that who they trying to get to that. And uh, on the other side of the net, Michael Schaefer's nearly uh, completely mucked that one up. But got the point. And what was a quite comfortable hold, it looked like being for Hude. Not at the moment. 40 30. So they move into a 5 1 lead, okay, second five set. Lead, five games to one. 6 4 to Fernandez and to Schaefer's first set. And uh, now let's uh, see whether Michael can hold on to uh, prolong the second set just a little bit longer. <laughs> this is the number one player in the world. We're yeah, at here, remember. That makes me feel uh, feel good when I uh, when I used to do some shots like that. 
gives us all hope. It's a brain cramp? Yeah. Maybe a 5 1 down, mm. he's thinking. Yeah. No, you're right. <coughs> you did say that uh, things on this side are not, are not working particularly well at the moment, and uh, both players are off their game, to be honest. Set points for Hude and Pfeiffer. Let's bring it back to one set at all. Couldn't do it twice. Great get by Piper right in the middle of that point, but uh, that was 15, the best of angles. No way that he was going to retrieve that on that occasion. Still two set points, though. Yeah, if they can try and put it back, then they can maybe take some momentum into the third if it goes for third, which it's looking like it is. You don't want to give the French too much confidence going into that third set. So you also don't want to serve first in the next set either, do you? Particularly? No, not the not the way it's been going. That'll do it. That'll do it for the French pairing as uh, we get the best weather we've had so far today in Nottingham. Glorious sunshine. Not much of uh, a little bit of a wind, but not much. And uh, we have a match on our hands. One set all. Number one seeds, number two seeds. Absolutely locked. 6-4 to Fernandez and Schaefer's in the first. And the French pairing back 6-1. And at the moment, it's hard to see the way the game's been going. The um, Argentine-Dutch pair going on to win this yeah I mean there's uh, the French have really stepped up there and um, yeah, yeah Sheffers and uh, Gustavo need to find that form that they had in the first set it's um, it's sort of good if they can use the court more be more consistent and cut out those errors they need to go back to being to the basics just be nice and solid and uh, yeah Get get the French pair off the court, stretching. How long does it take when you when you first start playing wheelchair tennis? How long does it take you to to really be able to move the wheels of that wheelchair that quickly and to to manoeuvre your way around the court as well as that? We just see the way the pipe has just done it there, where basically he's spinning on what you could call a dime. It's hard, it's hard, it seems like he's hardly moving, he's just kind of gyrating around, but, but he does it so quickly to allow him to have, you know, 360 vision, if you like, sometimes. Yeah, yeah I mean, that is, that's one of the, th the hardest things about wheelchair tennis is, um, is, the, is the chair skills. And, I mean, it would probably take maybe a year and a half, two years to, to really, really get... Uh, really get um, your chair skills up to the to the best, and you're still improving all the time as well. Even uh, even now, the the top guys will um, will be uh, working on their movement all the time. Just gliding passes as he does, Mr. Andy Lapthorne. We'll see you uh, enjoying a bit of sunshine. Got got your factor 30 on. Nice, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> 
On court next in the uh, court doubles, which we'll bring you live after this, but another set of this to go yet before we get there. And uh, can the French back up that second set? Or will we see the world number one? Remember, he is the world number one. Help his partner through to the third set. Would be a surprise the way things have been going. I'm a little bit surprised that, that Fide started serving again down this end. Uh, had good success. Wouldn't serve in at the other end. Uh, let's maybe see if he's uh, can carry that on down this end. Oh, that should long. have been in, shouldn't it? Yeah, no, he, had he had the, the whole court available to yeah. him. <laughs> Done all the hard work to get to the ball. Uh, put it on. Serving has not been uh, uh, top quality today. On uh, either side of the net, Maybe with Fernandez, who um, has not actually held serve yet at all. Ideal placement right down the middle. Maybe the chair could get to the ball. That's where you want to put it. Yeah, the French pair since the uh, second set have really started to show why they're they're the gold medalists. that by Schaefer to actually come in and slightly disrupt the pattern of the way the French are playing. They're, they're, they're staying quite a lot behind the baseline. Oh, Fernandez and um, Schaefer. So just think, move in a bit, change the game plan around a bit, go half court and see what you can do. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it, it will change what the uh, the French are seeing at the moment because because they can, uh, they're both very strong from the back and yeah, if Schaefer can come in then it, it makes it it makes it more difficult for the French to, uh, to, yeah, to hit, to avoid the Sheffers at the net. Well, once again, Uday having problems with his serve. <coughs> Couldn't get the return in. Too much. Yeah, has an escape really for Hude and Pfeiffer. Hude not looking brilliant on his serve, but nonetheless they uh, came through and uh, they take the opening game of the third set. Yes, yeah, so what we're now four weeks, well, less than four weeks away from the US Open. Um, same kind of structure for the last Grand Slam of the year in terms of when the wheelchair test second week yeah yep second week um, I think it starts maybe the Thursday uh, Wednesday or Thursday of the second week um, and yeah you have uh, the top eight players in the world for the men and the women and the top four um, in the world for for the quads so obviously Jordan's not going to be there so no she's not going to be uh, there this year she's even um, she's defending champion still even though because because uh, of the Paralympics last year the US Open wheelchair event wasn't on so it clashed with the Paralympics so um, yeah she's uh, she's still defending champion from two years ago yeah I forgot about that because we had all that discussion last year about 
Rio coming at the same time as US Open. So there was no wheelchair tennis at the US Open last no. year. It was a real shame that. But uh, back on the Arthur Ashe Stadium court, back on the uh, Billie Jean King court this year, hopefully. She's top eight at the moment, so she'll be there, won't she? She'll have qualified for uh, US Open. Okay? Uh, Lucy's going, yes. Um, so the Brits that we have are uh, Gordon and Alfie, um, which I think they'll be playing together as well. Um, Lucy will be playing with um, Geordie's partner from Wimbledon, uh, Yui Kamiji. Oh, right. And um, yeah, Andy, I think, is playing with David Wagner. So oh, is uh, he? Yes, yeah, so I think he's going to... Mm. He's going to have some home, su home support on his there side. That's a very strong pairing. Well, yeah. very strong pairing. Oh. Yep, best shot he's played today. Yes. Best shot he's played today oh, for quite some way. I think they. Uh, I think Chef has thought he'd won the game, though. Not yet, almost. Now he has. Now all he needs now is for his part just to serve out the next game. When he goes back on the side and then that. One game all. That's it. If they get a break here then maybe it will relax Gustavo and he can uh, hopefully hold for the first time. In. <laughs> yeah, they left it for each other. These other girls going long. Oh, it's not too late. Close. Nice
Try to be oh, too cute. Yeah. It's again. Again. It's not the percentage shot, is it? In there. Great if it comes off. Yeah, it looks, looks great when it comes off, but more often than not, it doesn't. But they're still in trouble. Can't get out of this game easily. So there's still a chance for... Those and shapers to pounce, maybe. Impressive intent from that serve, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Wasn't hanging around on that first serve. Uh, moving into it, moving on to it, and using uh, using the chair momentum to get a bit more in uh, into the return. There comes the break point you were talking about. Great serve. Chance there. Yeah, forehands let him down again. Brown from close range as well. Back of the court is looking alright. And he comes into the service box. Not looking quite as good. Not as effective anyway. From that uh, first serve earlier in the game. Yeah. That's great play. And the problem with that was Schaefer's was never really under control, was he? No. Always looking the wrong way for that okay. shot. And uh, that's 2 1. With the Fernandez serve still to come. Change of officials. As we're well, quite a long way into this game, this match, and it's uh, 4 o'clock. and. Uh, Difficult, isn't it, from a player's point of view to, to know what to do dietary wise on a day like today? So, let's say Andy coming up next, you think, well, if this is a quick two setter, I'll be on. This is obviously going to be a long three setter by the looks of things. Yeah. So, so that, that changes your whole plans by an hour or more. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really, really tough to, to know. It. You know, sometimes it's the easiest when you're first on because you know what time you're starting and you can uh, you can have your, your practice and you can then you can eat according to you know the start time but yeah when you're f when you're fourth match on and you, you know they've had a couple of three setters and two setters yeah so you might need to maybe have little and often and um, when he knows a bit more certain that it's gonna gonna end then he can um, fuel up and also quad matches tend to take a bit longer by the nature of the the people involved in the game don't they? yeah yeah it's uh, yeah, normally on court for a little bit longer and uh, Okay, is your money on him uh, holding serve for the first time? Yeah. Okay, I'm backing him. <laughs> not with shots like that, he no. won't. No, that's not helping me out. 15 all, and um, for a man who hits the ball so hard, the serve doesn't really trouble the receiver that much. Yeah. No, you've, uh, that's why I think there's so many, so many breaks. It's, it's, it comes uh, the serve because you're sitting down. You can't get that like the, the able body. You can't get that uh, leg drive, leg drive, and you're not hitting down on the ball. Mm. So, um, so you've often got to hit up with top spin, and it normally sits there quite nicely for the returner. All about placement. 
with a serve? Yeah, if you can get them on the stretch or um, a really good good serve is the body serve to jam them up, um, get it into the chair and then um, make it difficult for them. That's a good point. That worked uh, well for the Argentine Dutch combination. And they're edging towards potentially, at least, getting a Fernandez serve held. points for it. Yeah. Nice game, sorry. Yeah, yeah, losing, losing track of uh, points there, so yeah, that's the first hold. I'm glad I backed him. Yeah, he did well. Um, Fernandez holds, so we are still parity in set number three. Two games all. And now, Stefan Hude's had a uh, iffy day with his serve. breaks of serve uh, yes. I'm quite surprised that uh, there's been four holds in a row yeah I know it's just it's, uh, first time that's happened in the game in the match slow return oh. what you can do with that <coughs> oh that that's, that's the kind of serve we were talking about yeah Come up with a serve like that. First ace of the match, I think. Don't recall there being another one. He's done that a few times in the match so far. Nice uh, point down the centre of the court with uh, two players splayed either side. Not able to get anywhere near it, so uh, effective work from Hude. Dodgy bounce. Just taking a couple of layers of paint off the uh, outside of the racket. <coughs> Took a long time to reposition the chair yeah. there. It looked like he wanted to forehand whatever. <laughs> And uh, yeah, just couldn't get couldn't get it turned in time. He did a lesson off FIFA. I think FIFA would have been able to turn and get yes. in the right position.
Good use of the court there from Michael Sheffers. See today, the only player who has a ball holder for the back. Uh, most people put in the, their wheels, but he doesn't have any spokes in his wheels, no. does he? So he can't. There's a uh, there's a couple of players on tour, but yeah, there's um, yeah, more often than not you'll have uh, you have it in your spokes. I mean, Gustavo has holds it on his lap. Um, and uh, there was only one person I've ever known to put it in his pocket, and that was Adi Adepatan. <laughs> <laughs> when he when he tried uh, he's he a played basketball player. That's yeah, he uh, he tried uh, wheelchair tennis many years ago when I first started, and uh, yeah, he was the only guy I knew to put a ball in his pocket. And then so <laughs> that's Addy for you. That's the West Ham connection. That is. <laughs> <laughs> turning into one of the longest games in the match. Yeah, it's one of the longest rallies as well. So back to juice. Answer is yes. Yes. He's had so much. He's had two or three chances where the point should have been over. Um. I would say with the, the kind of strength he's got and the shot he's got, you think he should put that out of reach. Yeah. He's trying to hit through the pair, whereas maybe you know, he should hit down and over. <laughs> Get it, get it bounced really high and give them absolutely no chance of getting it back. Chances. Yeah, yeah, they did. Back to back points. I don't think uh, Fernandes will want to look back on with any great degree of fondness because a couple of um, errors, a couple of mistakes, which have allowed the French to get themselves in a good position. All right, still on serve, 3 2. And uh, all looking quite good. Who knows what? 47 this year, I think. How long do you think you'll go on for? I mean, he'd definitely go on to Tokyo. He's still uh, still one of the best players in the world. So he'd probably probably s see how he gets on at Tokyo. If um, I mean, he uh, he was obviously silver medalist in London, and then lost out in the bronze match in in Rio. So maybe he can he'll reassess after Tokyo and see how he gets on. He'd, I mean, he's still gold medalist in the doubles. He's still a great doubles player. So. Mm. Um, they'll probably be going into into Tokyo number one seeds. So, yeah, I think with with the money that's in wheelchair tennis and the Grand Slams, I think if you're in the top eight, then you probably carry on and until you sort of slip out of it. Yeah, it makes sense. Long time retired, as uh, Peter Norfolk keeps telling me, <laughs> threatening to come back. Of course, aren't you, Pete? Eh? Just always listening. Afternoon. So 3-2, Hude and Haifa up against Fernandez and Schaefer's, one set apiece.
Beautiful. Just, uh, just distracted points we've seen for the French pair today. Again, Great shot. just stepping up the intensity a little bit here now. Yeah, they've uh, they got that important hold last game, and now uh, maybe at the change of ends, they sort of chatted amongst themselves and said, "Let's uh, carry this on and take it to them." Well, they are. It's like forty. Getting our way. No. Just stopped. Lee from Houday, I thought he was going to hit that. So there's the break. Talking about to the break we've been waiting for. They match each other game for game up to this point. That could be the decisive breakthrough, do you think? 4 2. I think so. The way that the French are, are now playing, they're being really solid, but also very aggressive, using the court really well, getting, getting Michael and Gustavo out of position. But that's a great return. So. <laughs> with that kind of match isn't it you think there's always a bit of a pattern and th then the pattern disappears yeah and something else happens yeah Gustavo was going through a bit of a, a bad patch and then he, he found his form and same with Sheffers they were sort of making a lot of errors in the second and then the start of the third they really tightened up well that's the idea put the ball where your opponent can't get to it that was uh, about as wide as it could be without uh, Fernandez actually going <laughs> over the hoardings. If he, if he felt like he could have had a chance, he would have gone for that and just gone straight into the, the side. Well, a floaty serve that he should have done more with. Yeah, I mean, he did the right thing. He, he attacked it, but yeah, you can't be missing them uh, at, at this stage of the match. Good tackle right at the chair. Yeah, I mean, that was, uh, Michael did really well to pick that up and, <laughs> and get that back. But yeah, who day clinical when moving forward. Mm, too Very good this sure. time. Too good from Fernandez down the middle. Another, well, what looked like a comfortable hold is now back even.
turn. Was, and he intended to do that on the first one as well. Came in a long way off that first serve, but so it wasn't a legal one. Second one, same idea. Executed to perfection. Yeah, if you can come and take the return nice and early, then it, it takes the time away from your, your opponents. Okay, well we had the break, might have another one here. Yeah, this is a really important game as well, you know, the difference between 5-2 and 4-3. It's, uh, if they could uh, get this point. Second serve to look at, is he going to attack it again, like he did last time? Yes he is. Oh. What a chance. He knows it. Yes. <laughs> Not quite what he meant to do with it. Um, but you can use all the racket, that's what it's there for. Yeah, you don't always need to use the strings, but often it helps. <laughs> You've been framed. Yeah. That's quite an important point to do that on as well. Mm. <laughs> Give themselves and a chance. I'm sure he's going to attack the second serve like he has the all the way through. Yes, down the middle, took his time. That's why he is a quality individual on the court. Just uh, it felt right, okay. Make sure this is my last shot in this rally. Down the middle it went, and that break immediately expunged. And uh, we are back on serve at 4-3. Always fascinated with the tactics, because we, we watched the, the women's final earlier. No drop shots. Basically, baseline to baseline to baseline to baseline all the way through. Men's game is very different to that. Why, why is the women's game in wheelchair tennis so much different to the men's? I, I know the, the power ratio is different, but in terms of the, the, the structure of the game, the, the, the way the, the game is laid out, the way the game is played, really, very often. Yeah, I mean, it's from whenever, since I've been playing, that's always really been the way that the women's game's been played, is very baseline to baseline, see who... Uh, you know, the often the team that makes the least amount of errors will win the match. Um, maybe, uh, maybe it's a confidence thing. I mean, the Dutch pair with Yiska and Anik. Yiska actually does come to the net more often. Um, and Jordi and Yui at Wimbledon, Jordi started to come to the net more, um, which you know we try and encourage them to. But you know, I think once you get into a tight situation, it's go back to what they know, and that is you know baseline to baseline. Well, I thought we'd seen off the rain, a little bit of rain falling in Ossium. Oh, actually, it's a bit, a bit heavier than we had um, through the course of the day. Might just see a little squally shower coming over because there's a lot of blue around, but um, it's definitely a day looking at the clouds. I'm looking at my papers getting covered in water. And uh, let's see how long this is like. I think, it's, I think it's only passing, this one. Can't see it being around for long, but it is quite squally. Umpires. Have a look. It's heavy yeah. well. Not a good time for this to fall, is it? It's a very important part of the match. Yep. Mm. Certainly a little bit 
squally. People taking cover. Too wet, says the umpire. So that's us done for a bit, unfortunately. In the early stages of game number eight. In set number three. I'm afraid the umpire's gone, and so are we for the time being. I don't think it's going to be for very long. Heavier <laughs> than I thought it was going to be, yeah, to us, as we're about, we're about to take cover. So we will return with the resumption of this match whenever that is. I don't think it'll be too long. There's loads of blue sky around to provide we get a bit of wind to blow it over. Uh, but it's one set all, and four to be to Hune and Pfeiffer in the third. We'll return when there is some play to return for. We'll see you then. Bye bye.
And welcome back to Nottingham Tennis Centre. And uh, sorry about the break. A little longer than we had anticipated. A little bit of rain when we left, but a lot more rain uh, about 10 minutes later. We had a bit of a deluge in Nottingham. So uh, sadly, we've had a, a rather elongated wait for the resumption of play. But we are back on court again. And we are looking for a resolution to this men's doubles final. Stefan Uday and Nicholas Pfeiffer up against Gustavo Fernandez and Michael Schaefer's. Uh, one set apiece and four six, uh, four three rather to uh, Hude and Piper going to uh, this position and 15 all in set number three. So we are ready to resume and uh, we'll be getting the word to myself, Bob Ballard, alongside Mark McCarroll, former GB player, now coach, as we uh, resume. The court has been socked. Well, the water, we hope, has uh, been removed and uh, we are ready to go again. What we don't know at this stage is whether the uh, quad doubles will take place on this court. We're hoping so, but at the moment, Mark, we don't know. We don't yet know what the information is on that front. No, not too sure what's uh, what's happening with the schedule. They might, as talk, they might go inside or might go to another court. So hopefully they, uh, yeah, hopefully they follow this. Well, I'll let you know when we know. At the moment, uh, it's all rather up in the air, as indeed is the outcome of this. And once again, look who's having problems with his serve. Okay. Exactly uh -huh. the start. They wanted the French to come out and uh, be solid and... Yeah, obviously Fernandez has uh, struggled with his serve today, so they wanted to capitalise that. Well, it may not be very long at all in this match now. We're wondering whether it might be 20, 30 minutes if um, they could keep saving serve. But with that break of serve, the Frenchman will be out to try and win the match. And Stefan Uday is the man who will try and win it for them. <coughs> Isn't it, though? Yeah, the French have come out. It's really, really strong. And three points away from taking this final. Mm, 
we're going to get to that. Perfectly positioned, perfectly placed, perfectly weighted from the Frenchman. And they just uh, eye of a needle job, that was it. Yeah, he got Michael Shepherds really out wide and opened up that big gap down the middle that he, uh, he uh, finished the ball with. there. Three match points for the French number one seeds. Yet to drop a point since the rain delay. <coughs> that will do it. And all the way through from the resumption to the conclusion, it's been the French combination that's done the business. So the number one seeds, Stefan Uday and Nicholas Piper, come through in a matter of minutes. Having dropped the first set 6-4, they went on to take the next two 6-1, 6-3. Comprehensive job done by the 47-year-old and the much younger Piper. And uh, that's going to be quite galling for Fernandez, who's got to get his head together and start thinking about a singles final against Alfie Hewitt first thing tomorrow. Yeah, they're first up tomorrow, so yeah, maybe for Gustavo this is probably ideal for him to get this off the court quickly, get back to the hotel and uh, prepare for the, the final tomorrow because it's going to be a very tough final and I'd imagine it's going to be a long, long battle out there. Well, we'll let you know. Well, we are hoping, very hopeful, that we will have the quad doubles final on this court. This one's been wrapped up so quickly, but before we get all that, we will have the presentation of, well it wasn't medals last time, it was a couple of huge trophies to uh, the recipients and uh, quite a few people are hanging on to see two Brits, Anthony Cottrell and Andy Lapthorne in the final of the quads, hopefully they won't be disappointed nor will you, we'll have the presentation ceremony very shortly for this and then uh, hopefully the boys who were thinking they might be off the court will be on the court, so we'll see whether they get the thumbs up for the quad doubles it's still in abeyance, apparently. It has not been decided, so I can't tell you. And that comes from the man that knows. <laughs> He's given me a sideways thumb, which means they're still deciding about that. But uh, we'll see this, and um, if you have any news by the time it's concluded, I'll let you know. Otherwise, you might just sort of hang around with your, uh, with your red button, hoping for the best. And all that is down to the fact that the centre actually should be shutting at 6 o'clock. <laughs> And the uh, quad doubles can go on quite a bit. Go three sets, could be a couple of hours. Yeah, long rallies. Uh, it'll probably take them a while just to, to get in their chairs and to tape up and get ready to play. So, yeah, if it's shut in at six, could be in trouble. Mm. Yeah, not too long away now, but um, there will be another medal presentation. I keep medal, but in Paralympic mode here. There will be a trophy presentation, a couple of them. of all the officials involved in this match on centre court and the umpire and uh, yep that's the well word the quad doubles to come next here's the presentation uh, it was a great match that was fantastic sorry about the ring interruption but there's not much you can do about that um, I'd like to introduce our Becca Cass, who is going to present the prizes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Another excellent, hard-hitting final with some superb rounds. We are delighted to have such fine players competing here this year. The British Open at this Senate Nottingham venue is a landmark event in the international wheelchair tennis calendar. Tennis Foundation is very proud to stage it. As you know, I comprehensively thank all our sponsors, staff, and volunteers at the end of the earlier Women's Novel Final. I will merely now repeat our profound appreciation of their individual and collective efforts. Thank you very much to all of you. It has been my privilege to 
to attend these championships for the best part of 20 years. And the improvements in the overall standard of wheelchair tennis, both men and women, has been so impressive. And this men's final has been convincing proof of that. I'd like to congratulate all the players in the tournament and to thank all our spectators for their enthusiastic support. Now for your presentation. So to the runners up first, Gustavo Fernandez and Michael Shepard. Champions, Stephen Hizzi and Nicholas Pfeiffer. Well, they weren't Wimbledon champions, but they are champions in Ottingham at the British Open Wheelchair Tennis Championships here. They lost the first set, looked under a little bit of pressure, but then they got their game together. Looking in perfect harmony and in synchronicity on their way to a victory. 4-6-6-1-6-3. And uh, they're out back next year to defend their title here. And of course there is still the Masters in Loughborough, not too far up the road in November. So men's doubles victors at the British Open here in Nottingham. Stephen Day and Nicholas Pfeiffer. Thank you, Mark, for your time. Uh, thank you very much. I uh, really enjoyed that. And uh, we'll catch up again soon. And coming up shortly, we can now confirm that Brian Barton, David Wagner, Anthony Cottrell, and Andy Lathorn will be on this court. Uh, so where are we now? About five to six. Probably in about 20 minutes' time, we'll bring you the quad final between the American number one seeds and the Brit number two seeds. Talk to you then. Okay, that's my two-day five bucks. 